right. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Dan Hussey with Zaner Ag Hedge, bringing you a strategy of the day update here for July 13th, 2022. Remember, trading futures involves risk and is not suitable for all investors. And everything I've talked about here today is just my own opinion and not a direct trade recommendation. Um, we'll be covering a lot of this in more detail in tomorrow's Strategy of the Week webinar. We'll be holding that at about 6 p.m., maybe 5.30, but 5.30, 6 p.m. Central. Uh, normally, that webinar is every Thursday at 2 p.m. Do sign up for that if you are interested in getting added to the mailing list, uh, where you can then become a part of that webinar. Shoot me email questions that I can cover in the actual event, and of course, um, bring you updates and uh, a video recording of it once it's uh, been captured. We go over everything I'm talking about here today, more detail, more charts, more analysis, and I, as I peer through my crystal ball and give you my best guess as to what the markets might be doing uh, over this next week. Um, today, I really wanted to do, make this video to highlight, you know, kind of where we were last year at this time in both corn and soybeans and compare that to the price action and the volatility we've seen since, um, you know, the most recent tops we found here uh, into and through June uh, and the sell off we saw over this last week. Um, it's actually very similar to what price action did last year, uh, just a little bit different levels, a little bit of different caliber of volatility. But the idea being is that we may have formed a bottom here today, but it may not be the bottom in these charts. Uh, not to say that we'll break down and go substantially lower without a lot of outside market forces, macroeconomic indicators uh, that might call for uh, the Fed to you know, raise interest rates again, sending potentially the U.S. into more of a recession. This could, of course, turn into a 2008 type situation where markets and particularly corn fell from the seven dollar handle all the way back down into the mid threes. Not calling for that, but. That's on the, you know, on the docket, and we have to at least be considering it at this point. However, price action of the last 24 hours certainly has rebounded. We failed to take out last week's lows in corn and soybeans, and we might be, uh, you know, going back to some uh, some levels I talked about on a chart yesterday. We might be putting in a technical reversal now that would at least see some short covering or a period of price discovery higher. Now, where that resistance and where the markets could find a top, you know, inter, you know, within the range that we've uh, carved out, you know, for corn being between, let's call it 570 and 750, uh, that almost $2 range is a big swath of, uh, of price action that the market can now, you know, move between. Uh, however, on the way back up, we'll probably see a lot of producers selling, trying to take advantage of the rally that we otherwise might have missed out on earlier this year when it was too soon to do a lot of cash sales. Now that we've got crop, you know, going into uh, into uh, tasseling here, many are already beginning that going over the next two weeks, really getting the full swing for pollination. I think we feel a lot more comfortable getting more cash sales done on the way back up. And that producer selling is going to be a wall of selling pressure that could keep the markets, you know, capped, so to speak, just like we did last year. So let's begin going over, um, you know, kind of where the daily technicals are. We'll start with December 22 corn here. 200-day moving average, we're still below it here, and I would say that the 620 area is probably going to be some form of resistance on the way back up. That 18-day moving average that held as resistance three days ago is now at 643. It's going to drop on down here into tomorrow's price action, somewhere in the 630 range. So 620 to 630 is probably going to give us some resistance on the way back up here. Uh, if you know we don't already have resistance being formed by today's highs, we'll cover that here in, uh, in just a minute. Um, 100-day moving average up around 685 to 55-day uh, at seven dollars. Uh, over the next couple of days, we anticipate a bearish crossover of those. That might entice more fund selling. Uh, but as you can see here, we have moved out of the oversold territory and kind of into no man's land on that daily stochastic RSI, suggesting that we might have more sideways price action. You know, while below 660 and above, uh, you know, 560, a dollar range that corn could move between in the near term. There's a big trend line that we seem to be holding, depending on how you draw it against the lows here. Uh, that yellow line on this chart could be where we're, you know we found support, where we're trying to you know close back above here today, what have you. Uh, and of course, this old resistance that was uh, resistance April through uh, the end of the year last year in this 530 to 560 area, we've come back down to now test it as support. So the whole run up we've had for 2022 kind of been erased. We found support around the 2022 lows and where we started the year. Uh, not a bad area for the markets. Um, and as we'll look at in a minute, also is a massive 50% long uh, down at the 566 area from contract low to contract high for December 22 corn. So that uh, kind of brings us up to speed on those daily technicals. Now let's actually jump back in time for a second and take a look at where December corn was uh, last year. 
and what price action looked then. So we're right now we're somewhere right around where this chart ends on the on the right side of the chart there. We obviously had a lot more up and down price action through that first part of the, the spring, light spring, early summer. We were already carving out a range at that time. Uh, of course, there were different dynamics going on that year. We didn't have as late of a plant, which I think has kind of pushed price action for that range forward this year by uh, several weeks, uh, maybe even by a month. Um, and we might be forming the low end of what could be a bullish, consolidative, larger term flag here on these charts. So where I would put us would be somewhere right around here, uh, right where we had daily stochastic RSI's move from oversold back up into the neutral territory. We found a low that tested some big technical levels at the time. The old lows on the chart happened to be there. Uh, we formed new lows on the chart this time around, but we do have a day, at least intraday, um, the makings for a potential reversal setting up. It was still a lower low and a lower high intraday. So we have a three day downtrend still intact but we at least have had a short-term reversal um, intraday that, you know, without pushing through last week's low, kind of to me signals that we might have a bit of a range forming. And we'll go over that in just a minute. But as you can see here, corn basically still went sideways to down uh, through September, which could very well still play out this year, maybe even going into October, if we push that idea forward with the late plant and everything else that's happened this year. Um, but on the way back up, from this July rally, we saw, in my opinion, a lot of producer selling that kept December corn rather capped last year. Um, we were below the 200 day or the 55 day and the 100 day moving average and the 18 day moving average. The only difference this year is we've fallen back below that 200 day moving average, which arguably was a long ways off several weeks ago. Uh, but the added volatility that we've seen this year could account for you know the bigger swings we've seen. We went much higher than in December corn than we did last year. And we also fell back off that high. The pendulum swung from a very you know, rational exuberance in a very bullish stance, maybe got overdone with the inflation trade. We saw the inflation trade start to deflate in other markets like crude oil. Um, uh, bonds started to price in rate hikes. The equity indices kind of came down. Uh, the dollar rallied significantly to, thir I think, like 30-year highs here, certainly 30-year highs against the yen, uh, and at least 20-year highs against the euro currency. So all of those playing into macroeconomic effects that are keeping uh, some weight on the shoulder of all of our commodity markets and certainly on the export markets for our, our grains. But I think we can still rest on the laurels that the world needs to continue to eat and is reliant on U.S. grain. So I don't think that that is something that we can, uh, the strong U.S. dollar is something that will necessarily uh, inhibit exports in the future. But it certainly does change the pricing model that a country like Japan, or China and Japan might look at in terms of how they buy purchasing. And remember, a lot of those old um, Trump era mandates and uh, requirements that were set forth for Chinese purchasing of U.S. grain, they're not based off of a quantity. They're based off an amount purchased in dollars. So with a stronger U.S. dollar and, of course, a higher price of grain, they can fill those quotas a lot quickly, even though I don't even think that those are re really matter anymore. But they still give us a good barometer of what China might want to buy and how much they want to spend. Um, gr granted, we've seen a slowdown in exports over the last month. That's totally expected into the July and August time frame. But by mid-August and into September, we would expect to find a bottom in exports and start to see those, uh, those stockpiles gobbled away, particularly if prices remain you know, a little discounted to where we were earlier in the year. All right. All that being said, it took until uh, November and into December for this contract to even get back and recover most of its range that we sold off from which might mean, and if you looked at, uh, I think we'll probably skip the chart of uh, November beans here, but you really need to look out towards the March, uh, March to May timeframe for next year to see where row crops really caught that new inflationary bid or the new pricing, you know, and, uh, you know, caught the low in market, the marketing year and, and see, see it through to the highs. Of course, you can position in December and November, but you're probably going to end up rolling that contract forward um, for any of that re-ownership. Uh, that you do into the future. So I know for many of my clients, I've been talking about the March and May timeframe for call spreads. Um, over this last week, while we came down so far in price, I felt we got a little overdone. So we started to build into some wish orders and to and, and really pre-spreading out our, uh, our re-ownership with the anticipation of doing cash sales on the way back up. And of course, if we have those futures long positions on at some point, um, it also gives us the um, confidence to go and do cash sales on the way back up, knowing that we've got some re-ownership taken care of 
and with those, uh, you know, um, uh, what do you call them? Courage calls at the end of the day. Um, but as we do rally up here, if we do rally, which I kind of anticipate we will, it's going to be a tough nut to crack up at the 660 to 680 area for December corn uh, and, you know, the $14 to 1450 area for uh, November beans. But if we do push up into those levels, I certainly will be advocating for doing collared like strategies, buying puts, selling calls above to try to pay for them so that we can get a floor in price in the event that we do break down into the September and October timeframes like we did last year. Um, makes sense on the way back up to get some sales done, but doing so strategically where we're managing risk rather than trying to gamble uh, either bushels in the bin or being Texas hedged and you know, long both the bin and the board. All right, so December corn wanted to point out this big bull flag we formed last year from the June through October timeframe. We could be setting up and have the early precursors of that on the charts uh, here in the um, 22 December contract. So let's go down to an hourly chart now here for December corn. Pretty big sell-off. Uh, we bounced, uh, actually, I'm going to make this a daily chart just so you can see that full 50% retracement at 567 that we traded down into. I mean, traded to the penny pretty much. Closed that gap here at 576, cleaned up the chart to the downside, uh, and put in, I think, pretty formidable support up until this point. Resistance on the way back up, though, caught us around the 640 area. We looked at those daily technicals that, uh, you know, the 18-day moving average and what have you that were at that area as well. But there's also this cluster of lows and highs, this old uh, inflection zone in February that was uh, resistance, then support. Now it was support again for a moment there and for a couple days before we broke through and has proved as resistance yet again. So another move back up to 660 to 680 in corn, potentially fill that 673 gap. Um, I would imagine there's going to be some selling pressure somewhere up in that area. And if we do get up to that area, that's where I'm going to be looking to make sure that uh, I know my clients have a floor in place uh, if we haven't done so already. Intraday here, uh, we talked about how there was a you know 50% potential off the lows there uh, that failed out uh, after that gap up and gap reversal. Going down to a 15-minute chart here today. Um, and yesterday's price action and video, I talked about the series of measured move shorts that we saw play out on this chart, uh, then potentially became extension shorts, either drawn from the 613 low to low. Uh, at that time, you know, I was talking about us needing to get above the $6 handle for me to feel more confident in being a buyer on the dip. And I also mentioned that we might need to adjust that down to a new low in case we went there. We did. As you can see, this low from 613 half down to the new low of overnight, it actually got reaction here at 595 as resistance sold off, almost went to a new low, but then once that morning bell rang, we rallied all the way up to take and push us through that $6 figure, in my opinion, breaking that extended short. And now all I'm left with in terms of you know Fibonacci resistance is that 50% level from the 658 low down to the 567, or 576 low for the week so far. So 50% back for the week at 617. Again, kind of starting that 620 to 630 area, I mentioned this potential resistance that we see from a number of uh, indicators on our charts, uh, including you know this FIB level, but also that 200-day moving average at 618 and what will probably be the 18-day moving average right coming down into the 630 area on the way back up. So at the very least, today's price action has technically given me a reason to think that maybe a bottom is in place. It may not be the bottom, but it might be enough to spark, uh, you know, uh, buyers and uh, you know somebody to be a buyer in the 590 to 587 area uh, on this pullback maybe it, you know this is a front run of that level and we're going to go up to 612 uh, from the the close that we had but look for support in the 590 you know two to 587 area and if we do see support around there and head up to 612 well now we've got algorithmic or 50 percent you know trending potential long intraday taking us higher and could take us up into that resistance so at the very least, I see the potential for longs to have put a footing in here for December corn and the ability for price action for a period of price discovery back higher uh, now on this chart. So uh, let's take a look now at our November uh, soybeans here uh, that kind of wraps up corn. Um, but you know, I'm anticipating now some short covering and at least a period of price discovering higher for the corn. All right, November beans. Um, Arguably a very bullish report for beans. If you're reading between the lines there uh, from the USDA yesterday, uh, that that uh, that that uh, ending stocks number was certainly tight enough to make me think that uh, that uh, that 
$13 beans is probably pretty cheap. But if we consider what beans in November did last year, we traded down in a very, well, let's just take a look at the chart real quick. Um, why not while we're here? Uh, we traded lower from this time frame in July um, in a pretty, you know, pretty much all, all that I could call this is a meltdown uh, towards an October, November harvest low where we finally bottomed on the chart uh, into November. Uh, November, the November contract didn't have enough, uh, you know, to enough uh, in it or enough time left to get anywhere but back above $12 for the brief moment it spent below 11 uh, or below 12. Uh, but it wasn't until that January and March uh, and May contract that, you know, we got to see the idea of beans in the teens again, which is, again, why I'm kind of mentioning this year that you might need to put out, push out some of that re-ownership strategy or have the intention of rolling it out to later in the crop year uh, and into those deferred contracts because November may just not have enough time on the clock uh, for us to, um, for the market to recover back to the prices we want to see, particularly if we find ourselves in one of these kind of meltdown rather sideways markets um, that began, you know, from July, um, uh, from July on. So um, November 22 beans right now um, certainly have had the volatility event and the initial sell-off. Today's reversal on the beans, much like the corn failed to take out last week's uh, low, uh, suggests to me that, you know, without a test or a break below that $13 level, psychologically, we're still in inverted and beans in the teens type of environment. A 230 million, uh, million bushel carryout number certainly suggests that we are tight, uh, in, uh, tight in, uh, in our ending stocks. But, you know, daily RSI is only just now coming out of the oversold territory. We're still in no man's land, which also suggests, you know, sideways markets need to be considered. 200-day uh, moving average, we're still below that at 1378, probably going to be resistance on the way back up. And also right around that area, just like in our corn, is that 50% short for the week so far after the three days of lower lows and lower highs that we've seen. Um, well, today, I guess, was the second day of lower lows, but a three-day downtrend from Sunday's open. 100-day moving average up around 1480, 55 days, getting really close at 1487. We're going to get that bearish crossover probably tomorrow, uh, maybe, you know, Friday. And that 18-day moving average proved as resistance, just like in the corn, at 1440. Going to probably drag down towards the $14 area as we approach, you know, or, or if we see a period of price discovery a little higher. We have old lows here uh, around the 1400 to 1424 area. Uh, I'll put up a... Uh, Put a little rectangle on the charts here to kind of, if it wants to draw it for me, there we go, uh, to kind of denote that area or that inflection zone. Old support now is resistance, already traded once as resistance on our first you know, move back up there last week. Um, again, $14 to $14.50, probably going to be some formidable resistance on the way back up for soybeans if we get up there. Um, last year at this time, this November contract was going pretty much sideways. Uh, we didn't see the new lows in November that we did see in the November 21 contract. So November 22 last year was very sideways in a range, which again suggests, you know, to me that we might find some kind of low here, trade sideways to slightly down over the next couple months, even in the fundamentally bullish environment that we have before export markets pick us back up there into November and into and through the new year. Um, of course, this is all abating, you know, this becoming a 2012 type of summer the, for the next few, several, next month and a half. Uh, if things go to 100 degree heat everywhere and we don't get a lick of rain, um, I don't know if there'll be much that could keep these markets down. But again, remembering what 2008 looked like when we moved into a recession at this time of the year and the panic selling that, you know, was formulated from a financial crisis at the time, it didn't matter what fundamentals said that year. Uh, prices were going lower just because commodities were getting liquidated across the board. And again, inflation, uh, if the Fed continues with the rate hikes and the pace or even picks it up, there's a 75% uh, chance in the Fed funds rate for a full 100 basis point hike here into in, in July. Um, that could put a wet blanket on the inflation trade for the foreseeable future and at least into the first quarter of next year, um, where then I think you know, the dynamics of, you know, having to eat away at small stockpiles are going to, uh, you know, drive prices higher on the grains regardless, but we could do some damage to the charts before then. So again, $13 becomes a very important level for us to hold above here in the near term. 
All right, going out uh, on our on our chart here for the soybeans might have a little bit of that extended long from 13 uh, from 10 to 74 high to high, kind of the 50% level here. But really, I think the level we came down and tested was again the old highs, just like we did in corn, that old inflection zone uh, and the highs that we had formed on the November chart there last year broke through new highs for 2022, came back down. So we got two inflection zones we're kind of bouncing between at this time. The full 50% short from 1584 high down to the 1302 low, we, we kind of front ran it here. We didn't quite get to 1443, which again suggests another reason why I think we might get up to that area on this chart. And again, there's plenty of technicals up there that we looked at on the last chart uh, that could be formidable resistance on our way back up. Going down to the 15 minute chart, however, Soybeans uh, like corn and in the series of shorts we had off the highs here first one was the 1438 highs to the $14 low We then broke down went through targets. We started drawing the low to low extension in yesterday's video uh, that Resistance came in around 1380 to 1390. We went down to and through the targets there The next of the series I was drawing up was from a low here at 1368 down to the new low remove this other one so we can kind of look at that more closely here you can see that that resistance traded here in the overnight again just like corn we got a reaction we actually went down to a new low but then the market rallied after the bell right up into through those levels the only caveat i can see here for soybeans is that if we go back to that original low to low extension down to a new low we found resistance into the 1360 area um, on the way back up now that's almost an after the fact level because now that we've broken the next of the series, there's probably going to be some interested buyers, at least on a technical standpoint, from the lows of today to the highs of today, which come around 1340. And again, that's kind of old broken resistance here that, that we had here into the morning session uh, would be now being tested as support. So, so long as we you know, generally just stay above 1325 to 1330, in a pullback here in the overnight, I do think we probably have it in this market to get up to 1373, maybe extending as high up to 1390 to 1400. But again, once we get up above that 1400 level, you're going to have the 18 day moving average there. You're going to have the old highs and that cluster of broken support now is resistance that's going to come in uh, from a technical standpoint, right? Um, but uh, at the very least, we could be, uh, and I'm actually this new extension, I'm going to make it. Um, I'm going to make it purple and a different color on my chart because it's something I want to be aware of, but it's not, you know, a, a reason or a place that I'm, I'm a seller, right? That 1360 area, because I'm actually now from an intraday trader it, more interested in, you know, buying a dip for the potential for the continuation of the short covering rally. And again, that also comes and stems from the fact that we held last week's low, got a good reaction today. Uh, and the market could be, you know, signaling for more sideways price action, which would in the near term, you know, potentially take us a little higher. So um, kind of a good rebound here today in corn and beans. A little worried if we don't see the follow through that we want to and need to see for the market to really give us the comfort uh, that a low is in place. And again, I think a low has formed. I don't know if it is the low for this marketing year and for, you know, into the harvest time frame. Uh, there's still going to be a lot of producers selling and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, resistance on the way back up here. Um, but certainly fundamentally, we are supported in, the, in, the, in, this, uh, in this idea. All right, well, that wraps up today's strategy of the day, everybody. Uh, sign up in the links uh, in the comment section and in the information section of this to either get our daily Zaner Ag Hedge newsletter or to join me every week at 2 p.m. Central for that. Uh, and tomorrow, I think I'll be doing it at 536 for that strategy of the week webinar. Uh, the sign up links are in the comment section and information section below. Leave your likes and your comments. Uh, feel free to give me a call at 312-277-0110 if you want to talk markets, find out more than what, of what we can do for you uh, here over here at Zaner. Find me on Twitter. Follow me at DanSOTD at, here on Facebook or shoot me an email at dhussey at zaner.com. Have a great day, everybody, and we'll be back with you tomorrow and as price action develops.